<coughs> right. Okay, so I've been sent in an email, uh, so an email um, person who has sent in their questions, which I'd like to read and answer uh, to the best of my ability. <coughs> okay, so I'll try and keep his anonymity, so I uh, don't say his name. So I'll just call him B. Uh, my name is B. I was <coughs> writing this email several times and some time ago. A couple of years ago I started therapy, then 12 steps. Meantime, David R. Hawkins came to me and let him go. <coughs> I haven't finished uh, 12 steps. I've ceased in the middle of the fourth step. But before I've started this step, I began to practice A Course in Miracles. It was two years ago, but something in my mind kept me from going over Lesson 59. <clears throat> I have done um, the first 50 lessons three times. In this uh, year, there was a progress I started to forgive with other Christ Consciousness teachings. I've experienced states of bliss, miracles, non-duality, paradigm, but I've also experienced pits of hell and denial <clears throat> of true. That roller coaster was insane. <clears throat> I know it was my choice, but now I want to choose differently. Something called me back to 12 steps, but it, it, it is hard to change the paradigm to lower. Um, my first question is, how can you recon reconcile the 12 steps and A Course in Miracles? <clears throat> Very easy. I mean, Hawkins calibrated um, uh, the uh, lessons in A Course in Miracles at uh, 600, which is the level of enlightenment. The 12 steps calibrates at the level of unconditional love, which is a lower vibration. <clears throat> so the, uh, if you keep doing the lessons every day, I've been doing them year after year. Every day I do a lesson, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know, 10, 11 years now. <clears throat> They will dissolve the ego so that you, you reach eventually a non-dual state, i.e. you're in the oneness or the, <coughs> the limitless observer. So the 12 steps is not aimed, it's more dualistic, however it does uh, clear a lot of uh, <coughs> emotional and mental garbage. So doing a 4 step and participating fully in a 12 step program will help you, not all the way to enlightenment, but it will definitely help you get to a good level of spirituality. <clears throat> so, like in a 12 step, I will pray to God to release me of my resentment. Now, in A uh, Course in Miracles, you have thoughts like, all my thoughts are meaningless. So you can see, all my thoughts are meaningless is really a non-dual um, a non -dual, uh, application of a lesson of A Course in Miracles. I forget all your thoughts, disidentify, and experience the oneness or the infinite uh, non-dual reality. <clears throat> Whereas in 12 steps, you'll be like, okay, I pray to have my resentment against John removed, I pray to have my resentment against uh, uh, Catherine removed, whatever it is. <clears throat> so you continue doing your inventory and praying and helping other suffering addicts. So you can see there is a... Now, there, I don't see any problem if I go into a 12-step meeting and doing my Course in Miracles program, because I know that <clears throat> the Course in Miracles and non-dual teachings are higher, and I don't mind being in environments uh, which are lower, uh, have a lower level of spiritual truth, because I understand, you know, everyone's at a different stage of spiritual evolution. So I'm taking the good bits of 12-step programs, like the high vibration of the meetings, trying to be helpful and speaking their language, but knowing in truth, um, you know, duality, separation, illness, it's all unreal. It's all part of the illusion, which you only experience exper experientially, when you're in the non-dual or, or the uh, detached witnessing states. <clears throat> How can you res reconcile about uh, topics of family dysfunction addictions at the same time in accordance with ACM? ACM? Well, you know, <clears throat> it depends what level you're speaking at. You know, if I'm speaking to somebody who's very much believes they are their body and their thoughts, then I'll, I can speak to them as if illness and the body and their thinking is real, and that can be helpful to them. If I'm speaking to a more advanced student uh, who wants to be enlightened and free of attachment to their thoughts and their body as what they are, then I'll speak at a different level of consciousness. So you speak to a person or you comprehend things at the level they're written at. <clears throat> uh, okay, you understand you would have to consider illness as real. Yeah, I think I've answered that. Writing about brothers, sisters in past, which is not true. 
but simultaneously was a part of the dream. That returns <clears throat> crying for forgiveness. Yeah, uh, if you are, while you're in separation, it's good to pray for others and forgive others. Uh, once you start to experience more advanced spiritual states, <clears throat> then um, you realize there's nothing to, to forgive, which of course are miracle states. At a, at a certain point, when you experience the non-dual, uh, the observer, um, uh, the oneness, then it's understood that there was never a me and a you, <clears throat> so there is nothing to forgive. Uh, he, now he's mentioning some 12-step fellowships here, it was a drug fellowship, he's done A Course in Miracles, he's been some of the uh, sex-related and food-related fellowships, uh, and he says here, I remember that you talked about donuts and lust, so you're probably in a similar situation. Uh, there you go, that's a nice compliment. Uh, the second issue is in which the fellowship in which fellowship program do you choose to work with well I choose to work <coughs> uh, it's a good question actually um, one of the bases is which addiction is hurting me the most is it the donuts or is it the uh, dependency on people or love addiction <coughs> is that so which fellowship and um, but that's one consideration the other fellowship <coughs> sorry the other consideration would be where can I find the best sponsor and the best program because uh, a good sponsor is a really good thing to have because at the end of the day it's clearing your ego out so let's say I was uh, <coughs> I had strong uh, pe <coughs> people dependency issues and strong donut uh, food, ad food addiction issues and they were <coughs> similar-ish I would probably choose a sponsor initially in the who has the best spiritual recovery who seems to be very peaceful serene loving and shares a good spiritual message. Uh, <clears throat> okay, the issue about sponsorship gets some light after the, after the prayer. I was listening to Dr. Hawkins, <clears throat> sorry, uh, live your life like a prayer, and one of the participants asks him, could you be my sponsor? And the doc responds, the work itself sponsors you. Uh, the truth of the work sponsors you. You don't need the person. <clears throat> um, I would say if you're an addict, definitely get a, a good sponsor because they can uh, they can uh, reflect your blind spots. Which, if you're just working alone with Dr. Hawkins' books, uh, <clears throat> it, your your blind spots in your ego may well take you down the temptation path. So, having someone more spiritually evolved uh, guiding you is something I hi I would highly recommend. Another part of the answer came to me, thank you Lord, uh, he writes, if you want to look at this link, okay, thank you for your devotion, for sharing on YouTube channel, all love for you brother, love to you brother, thank you for your questions.